I, if you told me I was taking the exam tomorrow, I would never sleep. This episode was sponsored by Audible. Audible is the leading platform for audiobooks with a massive variety of choices. I personally use Audible every time I travel or just have a bit of downtime. A book I've been listening to recently is Michael Pillsbury's The Hundred Year Marathon, China's secret strategy to replace America as the global superpower. I'm going to leave a link in the description for the audiobook, as well as a link to sign up for a seven-day free trial to Audible. Welcome back, guys. This will be week six of the OSCP Struggle Bus. Today we're going to be going over actually quite a lot. We're going to be talking about my general thoughts on, if you don't know, OSCP is broken down into the lab, which is all of the practical stuff that you can do. They give you like access to the lab environment. Then you've got the book and then you've got the videos. I finished the video portion and I'm close to finishing the, the written portion of it as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to talk about how my general kind of attitude towards the OCP has changed since the last week. I talked a little bit last week about stress and how, you know, I was kind of giving and getting a little bit like, you know, kind of feeling the pressure. And then after that, we're going to talk about conceptualization and uh, one particular aspect of the OSCP that I found difficult to conceptualize. Before that, I'm going to mention the q and I brought up last video since we passed, I think it was 250 subscribers in the last video. I brought up that I'm going to do a Q&A video. Since then, we've passed 300, so I guess I definitely need to get started working on that. I've gotten a couple of questions in already, some of which have been really good. So I want to make sure that we get enough questions for me to make a good educational video out of it because I'm wanting this to be kind of a way that I give back to people who are viewing this so that it's not just me talking to a camera. I'm actually helping people out. So send in your questions. You can send them in via Patreon. I think the minimum donation on Patreon is like a dollar. So, you know, if you give a dollar and pin 50 questions to it, I'll try to answer all 50 of them. You can also leave it in the comment section of the YouTube video, or you can send me a link on Twitter. Any of those methods are totally fine. I'm not like going to necessarily just pick questions off of Patreon because I only have like two people that are donating on Patreon right now. So I, I'll, you know, I'll consider all questions equal and all of that. The videos. I finished the videos and I found that the videos actually, they get more helpful towards the end. And I don't want to say that like they weren't helpful in the beginning, but a couple of the concepts that they cover at the end were actually incredibly important. Things like Metasploit, they didn't even start covering Metasploit until video 115 out of 150. So it wasn't really something they covered very hard in the beginning. And that's mainly because they don't want to build Metasploit into a crutch. You're actually not, you're only allowed to use it, I think, once during the exams. So they, they don't want you to use Metasploit as a crutch, and a lot of people do use Metasploit as a crutch, so it makes sense. They went into SSH and port forwarding, so remote, local, and dynamic port forwarding. So they go into kind of pivoting through to the DMZ, which is the more difficult part of the network to reach. It's only routable within a, you know, a very small subset of the network. So you kind of have to get that initial uh, initial foothold first and then pivot through that initial foothold. So they go into a lot of detail with that. And I'm going to kind of talk about that a little bit later on because that's kind of a, a concept that I, I had some difficulty with. And then they went actually probably the most useful part of the videos. I believe it was the last dozen or so videos. They did a full miniature, full miniature, does that make sense? A full miniature pen test. So they walk through from zero access, zero knowledge, to domain admin in like a dozen videos. And it was useful for me to kind of conceptualize it and see, okay, this is how you go from zero to the very end. You know, obviously they, I think there were only like three targets they went through and only one of those was on like a, a more difficult to reach um, subdomain of the network. So it was just really helpful to kind of see that from absolutely nothing to getting domain admin, kind of how to put all of it together, wrapping up all of the concepts and putting them in the one. One thing that I will say is that the that last portion, it doesn't go into like huge detail. Like they talk about a couple of exploits that they've got a quote unquote fix. And if you've watched the videos, you understand you know what fixing means, like putting in your own shell code and things like that. They, they don't go into that granular detail because they've already done it. This is more to show the processes and how you get from you know nowhere to domain admin and kind of how to wrap everything together that you've already learned into a process. 
I thought that was really useful because you're kind of learning things all over the place with these videos and with the book and all of that. And to kind of take all of the information that you've learned already and put it all into kind of one clean, succinct process, that's actually really helpful. So I, I mentioned earlier pivoting. Pivoting is actually, at least for me, it was a relatively difficult process for me to conceptualize or, or to visualize. And one thing that the OSCP does really well, or at least the training material for the OSCP does really well, is that they give you the concepts and the practical tools side by side. So they kind of explain this is how it works in concept and this is how it works practically. These are the tools that you need to use to go through these processes. And that was really useful for me because I, I don't want to just learn the concepts because that's not really useful, but I don't want to just learn the tools because you're missing out on so much of the theory and the, con the, the conceptual nature behind all of that. So to have them like both side by side is really helpful. That being said, for me at least, the SSH tunneling portion of the videos, which is towards the later, the later end of the video training, it was kind of difficult for me to visualize it, it you know, especially like the, the remote tunneling and, uh, you know, just it, the, the dynamic tunneling specifically was kind of difficult for me to understand, but I did find a really good video and I'm going to link to it here that went over SSH tunneling. It was a video by hack five, which is Darren kitchens and Shannon Morse. They've been around for like ages and have a really awesome channel with some really cool stuff on it, but they go into detail on how it works and they show the concepts right next to the practicality of it. It was literally like, I finished that part of the module. I was like, hi, I don't get this. And then I looked it up and that was like the first video that came up. So I would definitely recommend checking out that video. I'm going to link to it in the description as well. Just kind of, if there's ever a concept or a practical tool that you don't understand, don't just like brush over it, keep going, take notes, figure out what you specifically don't know, and then start Googling. I mean, it, it really is like that's 90% of the OSCP is Googling stuff to figure out what you don't know. So I have gained a lot of confidence. I was talking about this earlier with a friend of mine who's already done the OSCP, and I was kind of talking about how I feel like I understand all of the concepts. There are just a lot of them. And to put them together with such a massive lab is kind of a difficult undertaking. But I do think it's, it, it's, it's much, I, I feel like, I grasp it much more now than I did during the last video. During the last video, I feel like, you know, I was kind of just getting like overwhelmed with all of the stuff that I had learned or hadn't learned or felt like I hadn't learned. And now I feel like I kind of grasp a little bit more of it. I, if you told me I was taking the exam tomorrow, I would never sleep, but I think I've got about a month left and I can get all of it done. I'm moving houses, which is why I haven't been able to do a lot of the labs. I'm kind of like in between my setup so bad that I, I honestly just gave up doing the labs. So once I get moved in my new office and I can kind of put everything in order and get back to the labs, I feel like I understand a lot more now than I did then. That being said, there's still a lot of reading and a lot of learning and a lot that honestly the OSCP videos in the book don't go over for you know genuine reasons. There's a lot of stuff that the videos go into very surface level detail about that the book goes into more detail about, but there are some things that neither cover that are going to be incredibly important in both the lab and in the test. I know that there's still a lot left to do I just think I have more confidence that I'm going to be able to get it done in the time that I'm, I'm doing it. I don't think I'm going to have to extend. A couple of the hints that I got actually after I posted the video, I asked for hints and I'll do the same thing in this video. Definitely leave any OSCP hints that you've got in the comments. I'm going to wrap all of those up in a blog post at the end of this and publish that. A lot of the hints were saying definitely do the test no more than like two weeks after you finish the labs. And that's because everything's fresh and you, you kind of you don't have time to forget it all. I think I'm probably going to do it about a week or two afterwards and just do some hack the box stuff and read up and read, especially writing some scripts. I think I'm going to write some scripts to just kind of make the menial like in map scan discovery stuff a lot easier just to kind of save time because you do only have 24 hours. 24 hours seems like a lot of time, you know, just like 40 something days felt like a lot of time in the last video, but it's really not. I am going to, you know, kind of try to make my life as easy as possible during that 24 hours, you know, write a couple of scripts, perfect my workflow and probably write like a shell write up for the labs and the exam. 
you know, just stuff like that to make my life a little bit easier. But aside from that, I, I do feel more confident. Thank you guys for continuing to show support for these videos. I mean, the, it seems like every video I put out on the OSCP does better and better. You know, you guys have been showing awesome support, leaving lots of comments with hints and, you know, just kind of showing out in force for these videos. I really do appreciate it. If you want to know when I go live with one of these videos, not live, but like when I upload one of these videos, hit the subscribe button and then press the little notification bell on it. That will actually notify you when, you know, I put up a video so that you can watch it right off the bat instead of waiting until YouTube eventually shows you. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'll leave the links for that and my Patreon below the YouTube video. This is obviously my part-time job, so, you know, Patreon isn't exactly like putting food on the table or anything, but, you know, every bit helps and eventually it'll go towards buying a better camera or mic or maybe having a prettier backdrop or something like that. But yeah, thank you guys for showing support. It's been awesome and you guys take it easy.